be very crucial for Mikel Arteta and one team that will be breathing down their necks, I do believe, is um, Eddie Howe's Newcastle United. Now, and Newcastle United are going to be fascinating to watch next season. Abs- it's going to be intriguing. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be all, all the adjectives under the sun. I cannot wait to watch Newcastle play football next season. I can't wait to see what they do in the transfer window this season or in the for the rest of the transfer window. It's going to be it's going to be very very it's going to be very interesting and intriguing um engrossing at times i feel like i'm getting sucked into that into their project but they have made two signings already um zven botman and nick nick pope yes nick pope that's his name um i think they're again shrewd signings which you have teams that get the injection of money my mind goes to man city and they buy rabinho straight away probably isn't the best signing chelsea they get the money they buy players like a Sebastian Veron, who didn't work out, and Crespo and Shevchenko. Oh, Crespo was alright, but Shevchenko wasn't great, right? So Newcastle are being very clever with their money. Very, very clever. And they also do know that other teams will bump up their price by 10% if they say Newcastle are going because they know they have the money. But I wanted to do a breakdown of Newcastle and their potential future. Now, like I said, Botman Pope, fantastic signings. Botman will slide into to the centre back role and partner. Um, partner, oh my god, I forgot who this other centre back is, but he he will slide into that role perfectly. Nick Pope will be will be the um will be the starting goalkeeper. He'll jump Darlo and Debravka. I do believe though those two are the only two goalkeepers. Um, yeah, I think Nick Pope, like I said, Premier League proven, knows what it's all about. I know that's not necessarily a big key for goalkeepers but it's good that he knows the Premier League is English still got some years on him especially for a goalkeeper so that's not really too big of an issue but um yeah it's going to be it's going to be some sort of it's going to be some sort of a way to see how that the, how they develop now Dan Byrne that's who it was it wasn't Lewis Dunk Dan Byrne it was one of the Brighton defenders Botman will partner um, Dan Byrne. I think that's a very solid um, partnership, especially for the way Newcastle are building, especially for the way that they want to develop. Now, let's break down what else they need. And I think the best way to do this is by looking at what they have and what they potentially should get rid of. Now, how to rebuild Newcastle is before you sign anyone, you need to get rid of Deadwood. You need to just gut the club out because so many of these players have been have been the kind of antithesis not antithesis but the they're a microcosm of the Steve Bruce football of the Steve Bruce era of the like post Rafa Benitez this type of football which Newcastle fans obviously want to just remove themselves from as soon as possible so the dead wood that they need to get rid of this is who I was looking through that list and I thought, these are the players that I think should go straight away. And I don't know the contract situations. I don't know if they've already left. These are just the players that I saw on transfermarket.com. So if they're not on the list, blame them. Federico Fernandez, Kieran Clark, Paul Dummett, Javier Manqueo, Jeff Hendrick, Jacob Murphy, Dwight Gale. I think they're players that will offer nothing to the squad and are players that, if Newcastle want to challenge for Europe next season, needs cannot have them in the club for the wage bill purposes and for depth purposes and also for squad dynamic purposes, they're not good enough. Just simply not good enough. Now, if you look at potentially their starting 11, you have Pope will go in goal and he's he's 30 years old, but as a goal, like I said, as a goalkeeper, that's fine. Botman and Byrne, I, in my opinion, will be your two centre-halves. That's 22 and 30. Right back, obviously, um, Kieran Trippier, 31. Matt Target, uh, left back, 26. I feel like that's a very good dynamic in terms of age for your back four. And I think that's your that's going to be your back four to start the season should you not sign any more defenders. And I do think that's solid. I do think, especially under Eddie Howe, that is very solid. You look into, you look into midfield, Bruno Gumares is probably a lock. Joel Linton has to be a lock, I think, based off his p- performances post-January. He was one of the best midfielders in the league post January. I feel like he has to start. So that's 24 and 25. And then who what? John Joe Shelby, Joe Willock. That there's probably an area where you can improve. And then up front, 
I think is the biggest area for concern, to be honest. So Maximin will start. He's 25 years old. Chris Wood shouldn't start. Hopefully Callum Wilson stays injury-free. And then he, I think, is good enough to be at least a deputy minimum. And then on the other wing, what, Fraser or Murphy, just or maybe Almiron, just they're not they're not to that level. So they're the, they're those dead wood. So like I said, Fernandez, Clark, Dummett, Mankeo, Hendrick, Murphy, Gale. They should leave. Now you're gonna be looking at Miguel Almiron, Ryan Fraser, the Longstaff brothers, and Fabian Shah. The reason I say Fabian Shah is because he's 30 years of age, and I do think he I do think while he's a better footballer than Jamal Lascelles, I do think Lascelles offers more intangibles. He's English, 27, knows the club inside and out. He's a leader. He more adaptable, I think. Although I could be wrong on that. Newcastle fans will obviously know a lot more than me. Um, but for the virtue of the fact that they're Newcastle fans. So Almiron Fraser, Longstaff Brothers Shah. I think you need to make big calls on these four or five players. Almiron for me, and I mean you could even chuck Joe Willock in there as well, but I think Joe Willock is offers something. I think he's English, he's still young. Premier League, he's been built up through the system. I feel like he offers more. But Almiron, I think it might be time. I I I like Almiron as a player. I really do like Almiron as a player. I do think he can offer a lot off the ball. I feel like he runs all day. He just keeps going. He keeps trying. But I just don't think he's I just don't think he's good enough. I just don't think he's good enough to be that that player that they need. He could leave. I think Ryan Fraser has to go. I don't think he's good enough. Thirty years old. He's only gonna decrease in value from here. You're gonna have to cash in. The Longstaff brothers I think at least Matty went out on loan or Sean went out on loan. One of them went out on loan, I'm pretty sure. I know they're, they're Newcastle boys. You want to promote the Youth Academy. I do think there's a place for them in the squad, both of them. But if you get an offer you can't refuse, it might be time. I don't know. Because I, I do rate them both. I, I think I rate Sean a No. They're very tight. I think Maddie's younger, so I think you you will give him the benefit of the doubt. Benefit of the doubt in terms of developing, and with the preseason under Eddie Howe, all these players that I've just mentioned could turn to world beaters. But I feel like the Longstaff brothers have the most adaptability out of everyone I mentioned to really be nurtured by Eddie Howe and kick on. So you're gonna to have to make big calls on them. They're either in your squad and contributing, or they're gonna to have to leave at least on loan, because you can't afford to have dead wood and baggage in this team. And like I said, like I said Fabian Shah, 30 years old. It's him or Lascelles, in my opinion, because I think Clark and Fernandez they got to go, and then it's Lascelles or Shah. It, it, it's Sophie's choice. It's like, it, in my opinion, it's I think Shah's a better defender, but I think it, Lascelles offers more in terms of leadership, and he's English and he's a bit younger, all this type of stuff. So you got to make a call on them as well. So with that saying, they're the players that you need to make the first league need to get rid of, and then need to make big calls of in terms of they're either going to be there and contributing, or they're going to have to leave. Now, who should Newcastle sign? So, I feel like I've gone, I've gone with one player in every area. So I've gone with a centre-back, or I've gone with a centre-back, midfielder, winger, striker. The, way, the reason why. Centre-back, if you get... So you have, obviously, the two starting centre-halves. Clark and Fernandes, in my opinion, like I said, need to go. And then you have Shah and Lascelles. In my opinion, one of them has to go as well. So with that saying, you obviously need depth. And even if you don't get rid of Shah or the cells and you keep four centre-backs, still good to have depth in that position as well, considering if you do get injuries there, you it's probably one of the most indispensable posi- indispensable positions because centre-backs can't hide. It's like when they're one-on-one with a defender or when they need a defender cross or a long ball, it's you can't hide anywhere. So I feel like depth in that area is very important. For the, Now, the reason... Now, sorry. For that reason, I've gone with a player who isn't in the public eye. Most people won't know him, but I've tracked him partly through Football Manager and partly through FIFA, but Football Manager mainly. And also, I have been keeping an eye on him um, because Chelsea have centre-back problems and I want to figure out who we should sign. But I've gone with Jean-Claire Tadebo. Now, if you bring up his FB ref right here. 300 or 3,115 minutes played. So sample size through the roof. 
he will be just a solid defender. Still young, I think he's 22, currently playing in France. Won't cost, won't cost a lot. Will cost probably downwards of 35, maximum 35 million, I think, would cost it around about 30, or even lower than that, in my opinion. Look, it's just, for everything you want, especially in a backup centre-back, especially in a centre-back that has room to grow and will be able to adapt to different game styles, I think it's perfect. Pressure, uh, precious tackles, interceptions are all fine. On the ball, progressive ca- progressive carries, progressive passes, both ranking in the 85th or above percentile. Shot creating actions, nearly one shot creating action per game. So like I said, he can go into the final third and make it make a real difference. I just really, really think this is a good signing for for um, Eddie Howe's Newcastle because he's young as well. So he's only 22, can come in, slide in, no problems, and be that deputy. He's, he'll be happy to be deputy to someone like a Byrne or a um, Botman. He offers a little bit more of a physical in terms of his pace, a little bit quicker than Botman isn't the quickest defender, nor is, um, nor is Dan Byrne. He will offer that pace and that little bit more, almost like athleticism. I think that's probably a very good word to, word to use. He'll offer athleticism in that in that area. He can also um, it also gives Eddie Howe room to play to a back five, should he change systems or should something occur. I think this is a signing that that they could make, and a signing that not a lot of people will be. Overly happy, not maybe not overly happy with, but not a lot of clubs will be after him. So I feel like he could be, he could get him for under the under the asking price, and could get him for a relatively cheap. Now, that's for the centre back. Let's move up the pitch, and let's go to, to a centre midfielder. Now, this this one's bold. This one is very bold. This is probably the boldest pick of them all. But I feel like if Newcastle want to be great, they need to be bold, and they need to take risks, and they need to put their neck out on the line and say, hey. We're going to spend however much money it needs to become a, a world-class team. So, I've gone with a player that Premier League fans will know, Newcastle fans will know very well. I've gone with Yuri Tillemans. Now, he obviously has been linked with Arsenal, has been linked with um, various different clubs. He, well, he's been mainly linked to a move away from Leicester, meaning the various clubs will be in for him. But I feel like he's John Joe Shelby, but a lot better than John Joe Shelby. You, you, you slot him into a midfield next to Bruno Guimaraes and Jolinton. They complement each other to perfection, to utter perfection. You have Jolinton, who is just that workhorse, that physical presence that can get up the ground, impact, impact in the final third, but also get back, defend, offers that physicality and will not stop running. Bruno Guimaraes is that over, overall... not So you know those players that are like 6 out of 10 at minimum? He's an 8 out of 10 at minimum for most things. He's just so consistently good at, at a lot of things. And I feel like he is very adept to playing it as a, as a defensive midfielder. So you will have to slot him in there. He, granted, that means he won't have as much impact in the final third. But when he played, at, when he played in France, when he played at um, Lyon, he didn't have that much impact in the final third anyway. So he will be adept to playing that number 6 position. And what you're missing from those two players, is a ball player. That's why John Joe Shelby played such a crucial part in the back end of last season, and that's why I think Yuri Tillemans can be absolutely fantastic for Newcastle. Premier League proven, will come on a cheap, still got some years behind him, and he's this little he's this little dumpling-type t- midfielder who just bobbles around the playing magnificent passes, so creative, so technically gifted. Like I said, 40 million I think Newcastle need to snap this up quick smart because, like I said, Premier League proven and he's just, I feel like this is very low risk as well. Despite the price tag and despite the despite the high nature, high publicity around the signing that he will have, you have to get this. And taking him away from Leicester as well, Premier League rival, a rival for those European spots you'd think at least for next season. Either, sh- surely. It would be unbelievable for Newcastle if they got Yuri Tillemans. Now, let's move out the pitch. Let's move out to the wing before we get to the number nine. And I was looking at the profile of Newcastle's wingers. Obviously, you have you have wingers all in a similar mould. You have Almiron, if you want to classify him as a winger. Even Joe Willock as well, but I don't think he is a winger. 
um, Jacob Murphy, Ryan Fraser, Alan Maximin. These wingers are very, as maybe JJ Bull from TFO Football would say, they're very dribbly boys. So they like to take, get the get onto the ball and drive at the defense, really be that creative spark with the ball at their feet. While that's good, and I'm not saying that that is a bad way to play football or a bad profile for a winger to have by any means, what you're lacking is creativity. And Newcastle last season, the way Newcastle perhaps found success through Eddie Howe last season was by just outworking their opponents, out-tempoing their opponents, pressing really high, creating almost chaos football, which worked. And it's by no means a bad way of playing football. By no means a bad way of playing football. However, what you perhaps lack or what you may sacrifice for that type of football is true creativity. The most creative player for Newcastle last season was probably John Joe Shelby in terms of a player's ability to get on the ball, ping a 40-yard pass or get into the final third, make that pass through in between the lines or get the cross into the box. John Joe Shelby, maybe Bruno Guimaraes to an extent as well. So for that reason, I've gone with a player outside of the Premier League currently playing in Serie A, featured for Italy in the Euros as well, Domenico Berardi. Now, if we bring up his heat map, my eye, I'm not his hammer, his FB ref, my eyes fixate straight to progressive passes, 6.10 progressive passes per 90, ranking in the 98th percentile. And furthermore, 0.45 assists per 9, ranking in the 96th percentile, and 4.69 shot creating actions, ranking in the 91st percentile. He's a completely different profile of winger. He's much more get on the ball. Almost like an like a playmaker out wide. So think of like, think of maybe someone like if Kevin De Bruyne was a winger, that profile of player. Obviously, he won't be. Brad is not as good by any means, but that profile of player out wide. He's not overly quick. He's not rapid. He won't be able to like get get on the ball and take three players on. He's still capable of doing that. He's still very good at, in terms of. Make, becoming being a difference maker, but he's a completely different profile of winger that Newcastle don't have, and it allows for unpredictability because he, he he's plays on the right hand side, but he's left footed. I, I'm ninety five percent sure of that. Um, so he's left footed, so any plays on the right wing, so he can get onto the ball in those half spaces and get those crosses into the box or spray those um, diagonal balls out to some maximum or to an, a marauding fullback or to a striker, or whatever. I think. Like I said, that difference maker, that um, that unpredictability that Newcastle potentially won't won't wouldn't have had coming into this season if they didn't get if they don't get him. Now Newcastle have been figured out in a sense in terms of uh, everyone knows how Eddie Howe's going to approach or how Eddie Howe's team is going to approach games. Now they're going to become more predictable. Getting Berardi in will be just be completely foreign to most defenses. No one in the Premier League really has come up against him, maybe except for. Um, international football because he doesn't he has to pass for Sassuolo so he doesn't really get um, a lot of oh my god I just hit my microphone there but he doesn't really get a lot of um, continental minutes I should say I think this is a a like I said shrewd signing I'm, I'm very big on great clubs make shrewd signings and this will be a very very shrewd signing should it should it be pulled off it won't cost a hell of a lot because he's 27 years old. He's in the prime of his career. He, I don't think Sassuolo will want to sell him. He's a he's a key player for them. I don't really think he'd want to leave Italy. But if he wants a challenge, Newcastle have all the money in the world. If he wants to be a part of a project, and the most important thing, if he wants to be adored by the fans, because there's not a fan base in the world that that um will attach themselves to a footballer quicker than Newcastle fans, right? This this will be very shrewd, very shrewd for Newcastle if they got this done. And it, it is a risk, in my opinion. This one is probably the only one which is an out-and-out risk because you are... It is a high pro, it's not a high-profile player, but it's a high-profile position in which Newcastle need, re, need reinforcements and need good reinforcements. So if you bring him, in and bring him in and he underperforms, issues. However, I don't think he will. I think if this signing happens... It's a perfect profile for Newcastle in terms of a, a winger that they don't have. This is the profile for him, for them anyway. 
Now, let's move on to the piece de resistance, the number nine, the striker. Now, the reason I say this is because I think Dwarko, like I said, out the door. Um, Callum Wilson, fantastic deputy, Premier League proven, great striker. Chris Wood couldn't hit a barn door to save his life. I don't think he's going to be the striker that Newcastle are going to want to play, potentially play European football with. So or potentially challenge for European football with. So I've gone with a striker, and I've gone with another player that is very well known to Premier League fans, to Chelsea fans in particular. He's English, currently plays for Roma under Jose Mourinho. It is Tammy Abraham. Now, I again, this for me makes so much sense. So much sense. He, I, he was unceremoniously let go from Chelsea in a way which upset me as a Chelsea fan, but also upset a lot of other Chelsea fans because he was pushed out of the door in a very poor way. He was loved by the Chelsea fans, adored by the Chelsea fans. Chelsea youth product, really passionate about, like he's just so passionate about football. He's passionate about playing well. And we we attached ourselves to him straight away. And then when he left, it was very frustrating, especially considering what certain Belgian striker we got in, in replacement for him. But that's another story. Now, with with Tammy Abraham, if he, if this signing gets done, he is the man to lead Newcastle. Let's bring up his FB ref right here. Now, while there's nothing extraordinary out of it, I want you to look at his non-penalty expected goals and his non-penalty expected goals plus expected assists. 0. 0.53 for non-penalty expected goals and 0.53. 6-4 for non-penalty expected goals plus expected assists. Now, this was something that he struggled with at Chelsea a lot. He would get himself into beautiful positions. I think his positioning is potentially one of his best assets. He, the way he can put himself into the box, he's the perfect poacher. Actually, I'll, I'll retract that statement. He has a poacher's instinct with this unnatural ability to play football like a midfielder. I feel like he's technically technically fantastic. He got the height, got the physicality, got the athleticism to get in behind with balls over the top or with through balls. And with someone like a Yuri Tillemans feeding him or even a Domenico Berardi whipping in crosses for him, I don't see... I, I think this is the perfect profile I, Profile of signing for Newcastle. Newcastle need to be... Like with Sven Botman and with Nick Pope, they have identified profiles of player that they need to get. This, these, these signings are carrying on that trend. And I think T Tammy Abraham, I mean, I've repeated this, he's English, Premier League proven, will score goals. I think he scored 29 goals for Roma last season in all competitions. So he will bag you goals. He'll bag you. At, if, if this signing happens, I can guarantee you will score at least 18 goals a season. At least 18 goals a season. Because he will be given that trust, like he was given for Frank Lampard's early part of his tenure at Chelsea and we start, was performing very well, he will be given that trust to be the number nine. And all, furthermore, he's gone to Roma, played under Jose Mourinho, so he's had a fan, brand new experience where he could take things from that team and that, and, and Jose Mourinho is one of the best managers in world football, take some personality traits and take some advice and some tips back to England with him to make him a far better player. I think his profile for English football is fantastic. He's gone over to Italy. Italy is a much slower game, so he would have to develop his intelligence in terms of positioning and off-the-ball movement, which is already a plus for him, which is already one of his best assets. So to see that improve would be fantastic. He will come back to England and he'll hit the ground running. He'll look to prove a lot of people wrong, especially Chelsea supporters. Uh, maybe not supporters, but the Chelsea board and the Chelsea entity. Yeah, I think this is the signing. I don't think they should go after Calvert-Lewin. This is the signing for Newcastle. Tammy Abraham. Now, Newcastle United are a genuine Champions League contender next season. Genuine Champions League contender next season. They've already signed Pope and Botman, two very shrewd signings for very cheap money, right? If they can get a couple more signings through the door, a couple more players that fit their profile brilliantly, they're going to kick on next season. Eddie Howe's a fantastic manager. They have a great foundation. Grim Irish, Dan Byrne, Callum Wilson up front, Pope in goal. They have foundations of a fantastic team with the brilliance of St. Maximin, who can just change a game like that. 
Newcastle United are going to be very dangerous next season, especially if they continue this trend of spending, which I do think they will. It's going to be interesting to see, and I can't wait to, to see it. Um, it's going to be interesting. Um, yes. So I think that's enough speaking on, on, on the tune, as they would um, refer to themselves as. Now let's move over to... Um...